Hello dear viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're gonna talk about cryogenics. So let's dive right into this. Well, this is a very cool field and I do mean that literally. Now, this is a very specific department of engineering that deals with very low temperature. To give you a context of this, this sort of low temperature, basically unit kind of change at that point in time simply because uh, we have to use minus in, uh, Celsius, basically minus 153 degrees Celsius. And generally for uh, removing confusion, people utilize Kelvin scale, which is the K. Uh, so 120 Kelvin. Now be very mindful. Just because this is this cold does not mean dry ice is not dangerous because again, it's still very cold. But it's it will be classified as very cold but people generally train for cryogenics in your training cryogenics handling and management so they will know how to deal with basically carbon dioxide dry ice so we are dealing with something very low temperature almost like minus 243.4 fahrenheit now one thing you have to understand things behave very drastically very differently we are generally used to things uh, having a certain range of properties but these range of properties change drastically when you give them this cool meaning air can literally go from being something cold to goddamn liquid you have something like a, you know flexible as a rose can becoming like a glass and uh, metals most metals simply give up at this temperature they are like yep nope most metals are simply not resilient at this sort of temperature things change and many times they change drastically heck things can become superconductor at this sort of temperature meaning resistance what are those we don't have resistance it's like how how what, what happened to resistance it's like yeah nope does not exist so things behave very differently very drastically so first question you will have is like how the heck you achieve something this cool or this cold well we generally do not use what we classify as phase change cooling meaning uh, how does our refrigerator air condition basically most common cooling system works is basically you have a refrigerant you boil it off and then you condense it that's two things you do now depending on how you do it where you do it you may have an air condition that can act as a heat pump meaning it can add heat in, into the chamber or it can remove heat from the chamber but at the end of the day you are doing these two things you are uh, basically condensing it in one place forcibly and you are evaporating in the place that you want to get cold however they generally do not work below minus 50 degrees celsius now again there are some refrigerants that can push to that temperature but the efficiency goes down to such a low degree where it's like is it really worth it so Minus 50 is generally, if you're really cooling something down, minus 50 is achievable. But below that, you can do that. And in some scenarios, it does make sense to do that, but it's like, uh, not really. So basically, you do not expect the same technology to work for if you want to condense the goddamn atmosphere. So anything that can go that low, meaning minus 503 degrees Celsius, we generally classify as cryocoolers. Now cryocoolers are, uh, when you say cryocooler, technically this means this puppy. But again, then this is not used to condense atmosphere. So for that reason, uh, there is generally scientific denotation where you are like cryocooler simply means small unit, meaning few kilowatts. And when you are talking about cryo refrigerators, those mean megawatt size unit, meaning the puppy that are used to condense atmosphere, run giant, uh, basically helium farms, super uh, quantum computers or uh, basically fusion reactors. Basically, when you need way too much of uh, basically cryogenic liquid, you generally use refrigerator. Coolers are generally small units. Now, be very mindful. This puppy is inefficient as hell, meaning you will be pumping one kilowatt to 15 kilowatts of energy and you will be barely able to lift around a few milliwatts of heat from the cold side so it is not very efficient the cop co coefficient of performance is brutally bad that's why we do not use this puppy everywhere uh, it's not suited for it because this puppy works on what we call ideal gas law i'm not joking that's the actual name i was also surprised like this is the actual name now what we are, have to understand there is relationship basically there is bounding to it of pressure and volume meaning these two things are interlinked for example let's say you take a chamber and that chamber has let's say one kilogram of air into it and you have uh, basically one liter of volume but you take pressure and you crunch that puppy you put some pressure into that and you reduce one liter to half liter but the mass did not change it was done inside what will happen the energy imparted into the system will become heat that heat will try to radiate out now if you uh, send that heat away basically uh, run cooling water around it it will cool down now here's the the mass did not change now you expand that puppy at that point the gas will cool down simply because now it has much larger area to expand almost like how uh, expansion valve works in a refrigeration unit basically you had something that went compressed dumped all its energy now you allow it to expand out it will drop the temperature of the surrounding walls meaning the chamber wall and that's what we call ideal gas law that's what you are seeing basically at certain pressure certain uh, volume it has a certain characteristic basically certain heat capacity change that basically you create a cycle around it it will never be as, as jaggedy as this when in real life when you draw the graph it will always be a very smooth uh, almost like a circle 
so that's what cryo coolers generally do they do not generally phase change and when you are talking about like let's say air distillation units what they do is basically they take the air they compress the hell out of it then they cool the hell out of it they try to cool it down to as low as like you know almost uh, five or six degrees Celsius then they expand it into a huge chamber huge chamber now again that chamber flow rate all those are carefully controlled otherwise the temperature will not drop uh, and then they have the liquid system at that point in time they will distill it out uh, liquid nitrogen liquid oxygen liquid argon things of that way so this is how we achieve such a low cooling so that whenever you see cry coolers like this they are very small but somehow they can drop that temperature that's all it's doing basically compressing the helium when that helium heats up it dumps the heat out creates a negative void in that in that basically there is a negative energy there then you let it expand basically tries to absorb that energy basically the lower energy state tries to absorb to the higher energy state cooling the cold point down and the cold point can go very cold i mean ludicrously cold almost to like you know few kelvins meaning even a tabletop variant that you can buy off the shelf will go as low as 40 kelvins so it's a very cold meaning liquid nitrogen liquid oxygen liquid methane no problem only problem will be if you try to liquefy hydrogen uh hydrogen or helium at that point they do act a bit stupid so that is an issue but that's how we achieve ludicrously low cooling temperatures now how do we store that because if you store it just on any tank this will happen so this is one of those things you have to understand metal are not that resilient when you are building a let's say a vehicle a chassis when you want to send it to antarctica or africa or things of that nature metal will behave more or less the same and there are some alloys that literally do not care in those sort of temperature regime, like minus 50 minus 60 degrees Celsius. the moment you start to achieve minus 100 most metal are like like this basically so you have to understand metal become fragile like glass and then there is another issue of heat creepage meaning if you have a let's say a tank of liquid nitrogen for example the gradient meaning the outside could be let's say in case of india could be as hot as 51 degrees celsius and you are talking about the inside of the tank that could be very low it could be like minus 50 minus 150 minus 200 you get that point like the cold point is very cold when you are talking about crow channel there is a very serious energy uh, potential difference very serious what does that mean that simply means energy really wants to get inside and consequence of that is most insulator will flat out not work flat out you cannot stop that kind of energy uh, potential from penetrating any insulator so we simply have to give utilize vacuum flask now vacuum flasks do work but generally they prefer to be big basically the bigger the flask the more uh, slower the boil off would be now here's the deal because the temperature gradient is so extreme it will still boil off no matter what you do it will still goddamn boil off the temperature gradient. meaning you can have an industrial grade pro level uh, vacuum vacuum flask where you put a like say hot coffee there it's gonna remain hot for like freaking uh, days or even months but you put liquid nitrogen there good luck it's not gonna last very long to deal with like very large storage and tanks generally they require uh, what we call uh, basically cry coolers built into that just to remove that excess heat and custom alloys are used meaning certain specific al uh, alloys are very well suited for this sort of cryogenic temperature meaning there is certain mix of uh, stainless steel uh, certain alloys of aluminium basically aluminium lithium alloys they are very good at this sort of cryogenic temperature so they have to be used if you use anything else uh, it will shatter like a glass and because of the boil off importance meaning the it will boil off no matter what you do all the systems that are designed by any trained professional generally have a boil off scenario meaning it has a pressure vent no matter what you do you will always build this puppy and cryogenic cooler would be added just to slow down the boil off meaning if boiling off is happening let's say one liter a day again very huge tank i mean it won't be that much but let's say you have such a bad scenario very high thermal flux uh, one liter a day you will add a cryo cooler that can remove at least uh, or create almost one point one liter per you want to be a bit up so you do not run your cryo cooler 24 into 7 you run it in like you know bursts so storage is all whole different level of issues it's like very complex how do you manage this puppy then do we use this puppy well that that's the one thing that i specified we all use it all the time every day like again we do not use it directly but we you basically we are all touched by it every field uses this meaning medical field like right now during covid we all have realized the value of oxygen now how do you transport oxygen you can make oxygen literally from electricity uh, air distilling unit done you got the oxygen but here's the how do you transport that puppy now it's in liquid format so if somebody figured out then let's just make a flask uh, tanker trucks and just transport it benefit of this the volume is very low because you do understand that most people generally when they are breathing oxygen through oxygen tanks they are running on what we call compressed oxygen now compressed oxygen it is still better than basically just 
raw air but it is not very high density the capacity is very low meaning how many kilograms or how many liters of oxygen it can give you it's very low so we cannot transport that puppy again you can have the same uh, volume meaning the same amount of liters but the kilograms that you can transfer would be very less that's why we have to liquefy it and not to mention it also saves energy steps simply because you already liquefied the atmospheric air you already filtered it just send it in that format so this puppy will be transported all around the country and during uh, if hospital is big enough it may have a boiled off scenario and boiling this puppy off is super easy basically an ambient air is hot enough for it to boil so meaning it will take that liquid put it in a cylinder like uh, basically radiator we call it and ambient air will heat it up it will become pressurized automatically because your temperature is rising it start to boil off that high pressure oxygen will be stored in tanks that tanks will be provided to patients so you get that point like for medical industry it is important then we come to mri mri machine if you have pay attention to any mri uh, system that you have to go through i have also went there you will look around it you will find something that calls helium room or helium chamber basically uh, the cryogenic system that we need here basically for superconductivity meaning uh, the magnets on mri machine are got tier most magnet do not measure in tesla uh, but whenever you are talking about like magnets that go inside mri machines you will see like even uh, if they are advertising it is like 1.4 tesla mri machines you get the point like mri machine magnetic fields are on a whole different level so how do you achieve that electromagnets problem is no material can uh, you know carry that kind much of current without melting so we have to use superconductor meaning puppy that does not have resistance so the consequence of that generally this technology is quite old mri machines so we used to use liquid helium for that benefit it drops to almost absolute zero almost like three four kelvin but it does work and it's quite amazing and some people are working their ass off to convert from liquid helium to liquid nitrogen benefit liquid nitrogen much cheaper so you can have much more hospitals having this equipment but let's see how that turns out so you get that point like if you went to mri you went through cryogenic system i mean like it was surrounding you then we come to energy transport like what, how does uh, russia transport its energy basically the gas it does not it takes the gas it compresses that puppy down then it becomes cng then it compresses that hell down and then cools it down then it becomes what you call lng liquefied natural gas now benefit super compact size almost like how liquid russia and then it uh, use utilizing lng carriers it is shipped around the world meaning china india uh, africa all over the nations basically now uh, again right now we are also looking into using lng directly as a vehicle fuel so you may find that also and then we come to space technology meaning all your gps and all that and people earlier uh, back in the days were, were happy with oxidizer liquefied meaning liquid oxygen good enough liquid oxygen rp1 awesome done it does have the oomph behind it i mean like that's how we went to the moon saturn 5 oomph behind it that came from rp1 but people realized if you want to make a reusable rocket you cannot use dirty fuel as a rp1 which is highly purified it's ludicrously dirty with the carbon chains are like really messy it creates soot that's why like uh, when you see falcon 9 it's trying to land it goes up white comes back black it's like what the hell happened soot happened so uh, now uh, nowadays even the fuel part is also going to cryogenic meaning methane liquid methane so use wise everything uses this even if you do not know it i guarantee it somewhere along the line it has been used so what we can expect in the future right right now some people are thinking about using cryogenic temperature basically treating the exhaust from a coal power plant meaning if you have a coal power plant it does produce gg amounts of energy if you can do it efficiently enough uh, sparing small amount of energy from it meaning let's say it's a thousand one gigawatt kind of system you have five megawatt system which just compresses the hell out of a basically exhaust system cools it down to cryogenic temperature at that temperature basically carbon dioxide becomes dry ice and all other uh, emissions also goes down drastically meaning the emissions goes from like you know uh, city killer to almost like not annoying anyone so that is a very easy way of using cryogenic and it removes steps like many, there are many other process chemical process but most of the chemical process have way too many steps it's like you know have this have that have this have that uh, cryogenic is just like cool bro just just take a chill pill so you can make co2 now co2 in dry ice format is very easy you can just bury it under the ocean because of the pressure it will not expand it does not matter the temperature it's the same reason why water does not boil uh, during uh, you know undersea volcano basically the pressure is not allowing it to boil same will happen with dry ice discovery channel did try to, uh, did that uh, very small rockets they made to went into this like it went very quickly and it did not melt yeah it will how can it melt because she is not allowing it to change phase basically it got phase locked so that's one way of storing uh, basically using cry cryogenic technology cleaning up our the atmosphere and then we have to better rockets for space i mean like something like uh, basically reusable uh, saturn 5 cannot be even be imagined if you're not using cryogenic system 
do not even think about it then we have to uh, think about lng system uh, even india is uh, thinking about it because right now we are in a phase where we know for a fact that we have to change our fuel system okay and remove uh, basically uh, global warming from it but no country wants to be live in a scenario where it's like you know hey russia is in the mood and the power went, bill went up nobody wants that like that's not acceptable that's not sustainable so everybody was like wants to change our fuel from heavy oils to lighter systems to eventually methane because methane can be made from bio waste so lng is a very good solution there because it's a very good transition fuel on top of that it does have the advantage per unit of energy you are getting you are producing little uh, less little less uh, of carbon dioxide so that's also desirable i have provided the video down below of uh, basically tata motors making their lng system for india then we come to the superconductive part of basically the primary reason how MRI machine works. Uh, we are hoping that we can crack fusion. Now fusion scientifically it should work. Engineering wise we have made all the reactor but break even factor is just too goddamn low. Lot, not even low it's almost zero. It's like think of it this way like we put 10 gigawatts of energy basically the whole power plant. And when it, this achieves like it is actually achieving fusion the oomph the energy coming out of it is barely 1x. Meaning you put 10 gigawatt, this puppy is barely glowing at the power rating of 1 gigawatt. Meaning if you tend it through a steam and created electricity, yeah, it's useless. So we need power factor of ludicrously high levels, meaning 200 or 300, then only it makes sense. You almost think of it this way. You have a high horsepower car, meaning 100 horsepower. Does not mean the starter motor is 100. Hours. Like again, for a short bus, it can provide that kind of oomph. But it only starts the motor and then it's like, car engine is like, I got this. We are not achieving this. And many people are thinking simply because we are utilizing old kind of magnet system. Uh, again, this system has been in research for our past 50 years so now people are using a uh, warm temperature superconductor while keeping it super cool I mean, like why it's warm temperature superconductor but they are cooling it with helium rather than cooling it with liquid nitrogen it does add cost but the understanding is going into that low like taking a superconductor going into extra low level you can increase the flux density to a point where this can have huge amount of magnetic power meaning on a level that no older design can even think about like the oomph the magnetic oomph and when you can have that magnet then you can compress the plasma you can like i got this plasma if you can do that hopefully we can crack it because be mindful fusion uh, scientifically is doable it's the engineering that we are sucking at right now we have no idea and my personal belief is like i will be long dead before this puppy ever cracks like you know power factor of 300 or 400 where it actually becomes economically viable i have very low hopes for it but let's see so I may be proven wrong. I hope I'm wrong. So this was my presentation on cryogenic field. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please kick the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.